Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bob and this is Bobco Astro. And today I'm going to be looking at a camera I've just purchased, uh, very much second hand, uh, the Canon T3 Rebel or uh, the EOS 1100D as it's known in the UK. Now I purchased this camera second hand uh, it was described as not working and sure enough when I picked it up it did not power on at all. Now what I propose to do with this is a conversion to infrared and full spectrum um, photography. Full spectrum we would use for astrophotography uh, using various filters in the system and uh, infrared obviously speaks for itself infrared photography so a quick note on filters for those of you um, who are not sure what I'm talking about uh, when you're using a full spectrum camera for astrophotography uh, with a Canon I tend to use these which is a clip filter and that clips into the body of the camera behind the lens and that only allows certain wavelengths of light to enter and be registered by the camera's sensor. You'll do this to isolate specific wavelengths of light uh, that you're particularly after, ideally for nebula uh, photography and such like. And with infrared, uh, I just use, you can have a camera converted over to only see in infrared, um, but we're doing multi-purpose here so we're going for astrophotography and infrared and for infrared I'll use a just a standard screw-on filter uh, which goes on the end of the camera lens so that the uh, the camera can only see the infrared light spectrum of that filter so uh, a quick word on on filters there and um, let's carry on with uh, our demonstration. When I purchased this camera it was as I say described as not working. I've had a look at it, uh, stripped it down. It came with this uh, battery grip on the bottom and when I removed the battery grip there was no uh, battery door on the camera and no battery uh, door was supplied with the camera. Now having a good look around it uh, I found a couple of problems with the battery grip and the contacts were oxidized not working very well the internal tray that holds the batteries wasn't making a good connection I've repaired those uh, bits and pieces and um, lo and behold it works uh, and the only reason it doesn't work with a standard battery is because there's a micro switch that needs to be operated by the battery door so um, fully working camera now and uh, a new battery door on order so we're going to go ahead with the modification and uh, I'll take you through step by step what we need to do now, there's a couple of tools uh, you're going to need for this now but first of all let me say I'm not an expert in this I'm not a camera repair engineer uh, this is just me tinkering and uh, having a having a go at home as they say I really wouldn't do this on a new camera this is a cheap second-hand camera um, no warranty and if it goes wrong it doesn't really matter it doesn't stand me in any uh, real expense so do this at your peril um, but if you're a little bit handy and, and not too bad with a screwdriver then um, yeah give it a go and uh, it's a cheap way to convert quite a reasonable camera it's a 12 megapixel camera it's about 10 years old now but um, perfectly capable for the astro and infrared photography so what are we going to need a um, couple of things uh, first of all a precision screwdriver set I've got a pair of long nose pliers couple of different sets of tweezers 
a craft blade. Uh, I've got a white cloth to place all the screws that I take out and I'm going to place them in a certain order on here so that I know which order and which screw goes back. Sometimes you'll take half a dozen screws out in one process and they'll all be different lengths so you need to know which screw came out from where. I'm going to have a pot with a lid that I will put um, anything that I remove from the camera into and put the lid on to keep us a dust free environment. I've got uh, an air blower so that we can keep uh, any dust at bay. Here's our camera Canon Rebel T3, UK equivalent, the uh, EOS 1100D. Uh, let's give it a go. One thing to add with this modification, be aware that on this particular camera, when you do a full spectrum modification and remove the hot filter from in front of the sensor, the camera will no longer be able to uh, auto focus. Now on something like a 600D uh, camera, the sensor uh, sits on adjustable screws which are spring loaded so you can compensate for the removal of the hot mirror. This particular camera the sensor sits on shims so because it sits on shims uh, unless you've got access to a quantity of those shims and means to measure them you can't compensate on the back focus of the sensor for the removal of the hot mirror. So what you're effectively doing is removing the camera's ability to correctly autofocus. Uh, so that's absolutely fine for what we're after because by converting it to a full spectrum astro and infrared camera we're only going to be using manual focus anyway. But be aware that by doing this modification which is not reversible you are no longer going to be able to use this camera for everyday photography. Quick word on uh, health and safety. Um, some websites will tell you to wear gloves when you're doing this uh, work and uh, it is a good idea. I'm not going to be doing it. Uh, other um, instructions you can find on the internet will tell you to wear a earth strap uh, around your wrist to prevent any damage to the electronics. Uh, again, very good idea. Um, I'm not going to be doing it. I haven't had a problem in the past. Um, famous last words. So we'll see how we get on. So what we're going to do first and foremost is to uh, start preparing the camera. So we're going to remove the lens. And in removing the lens, I'm just going to put a cap on the body to help prevent any dust coming in and do the same on my lens. Just put a protective cap on that and put that to one side. Let's remove the battery grip. You may not have this on your camera, but uh, it's on mine because it's the only way of powering it at the moment until I get that battery door. So that's off and we'll place that to one side. Now if you do have a uh, battery in the camera, uh, remove the battery, remove any SD card that you may have or other uh, portable drive that you may have in the camera, get that out of the way. So. We now have our bare camera, no lens, no battery, no SD card, ready to go. And now we'll start having a look at uh, breaking this down. So here we go. First thing we're going to do is remove the eyepiece cap, the eyepiece cover, and put that to one side in our pot. We've then got the diopter here, which is held in by a screw and two further screws that need to be removed. And for these, I'm going to use 
my precision screwdrivers and a small posi drive screwdriver to remove one, two and three. As you can see, the diopter screw comes out with the diopter dial. I just put that to one side. So next up, if we turn the camera on its side, we've got these two screws here. So we're going to remove these. And once again, they are two different lengths, those screws. So do make sure you're putting them uh, the right way around when you put them back. Turning the camera over, we have this screw here above the uh, USB access door. And now we have seven screws to remove on the bottom of the camera. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven here. Turning the camera back over so we can see the front face. We have two screws here above the lens carrier. And over onto the top, we have one screw here and one screw here, which sit behind the strap holding points. And once again, we find these screws are different lengths, so make sure that you put the right one back in the right hole. Moving back to our USB access, if we open this up, we'll find that we have two small screws in here. So now we start getting into a bit more of the fun part and we're going to remove the rear panel. So just ease this off nice and gently. Don't take it all the way because as you see, you will have two ribbon cables connecting it. Now, already one of those has popped out for me in removing the panel, but you've got this one here and you've got this blue one. So it's these two that you need to remove. Now these type of connectors have a small black retaining clip. I use a flat headed precision screwdriver for this. I don't know if you can see here, but you've got this black retaining clip here. And if we just lever that up, then we can remove this ribbon. Now, what I'm going to do to remove this ribbon, you'll see there's a small, or you might not see in a video, but there's a small hole here in the ribbon just to help you uh, with maneuvering it. And I'm gonna use very carefully my craft knife and just put the tip of it in that hole and just wiggle the uh, ribbon cable out. And that's our back panel, complete with screen, uh, removed. And I'm gonna place that in my tub that I prepared and uh, Let's put the lid over the top there to keep that nice and safe. Now we can see, uh, I hope you can see there, 
a lot of the uh, internals and electronics that we need to mess about with. So next up, very carefully, we need to remove these following items. We've got this cable, this electrical plug, these two cables here, this large one here, two cables, one sitting behind the other here, and two cables, one sitting behind the other here. And uh, I'll go ahead and remove those. Now with this large one here, I'm actually going to remove it completely by disconnecting it also from the circuit board. Just teasing it up with the screwdriver nice and gently until it should just pop off. And I'm going to place that in my tub out of the way. So we're going to come around to the front cover now and remove our front cover. So once again, nice and gently trying to tease it away from its mounting points. You see at the bottom here it clips over the top of the bottom mounting point of the camera. And there we go. Also, you can see that the uh, USB access door came off with that. I'm going to put both of those pieces away into my tray. Be very careful um, what you touch in here. There's a large capacitor there that I wouldn't like to uh, get my hands too close to. Uh, so health and safety is the order of the day here. And let's see where we go from here. So next up, we're going to remove this rear circuit board here. And we've got one, two, three, four, and five screws to remove. And now our circuit board should come away. Now we're not removing the circuit board completely. We're just going to move it out of our way. But one thing to note here, when you do uh, displace this circuit board, is just here, this white plug here is a receptor for a, a fiber optic cable, which hopefully you can see just here. Now this fiber optic cable, when the board is replaced, needs to be just pushed into that recess. So make sure you don't forget that when you replace the board and screw it back down. Make sure that this fiber optic cable goes into this 
plug receptor here. There is only one plug uh, attaching this now, so I think I'm actually going to go ahead and remove it completely. Place that uh, that board to one side. And we also need to remove this top cover. So go ahead and remove this. Teasing it up nice and gently. Seeing what connections we've got. We've just got some wire connections at the front there. And uh, we're going to leave those in place. They're soldered on. And that just gives us access now to the screws that hold the sensor in place. Okay, so the screws that we're going to want to remove now are these two. Let me bring that up for you. What we're going to need to remove is these two screws here and the three screws that hold the sensor down, which is this one at the very top, this one here, and this one over here. And let's get those out of the way. So there we have the business end. There is our sensor. Now we need to be extremely careful with our sensor, not to touch the sensor itself and uh, to make sure that we don't have any dust on the system when we replace it. So we now put our camera to one side Now be very, very careful here. The sensor is shim adjusted. So we've got shims here, here, and here. You wanna make sure you don't turn the camera up the other way and all those shims fall out and you don't know which shims went back in where. So make sure that you leave these shims in place and don't disturb them. So camera, keep it facing this way up and move it to one side. And now we can look at our sensor assembly. So the first thing we need to do is remove the sensor uh, hot mirror retaining clip, which is these two screws here. Now the retaining clip itself clips into place so we just need to lever it gently away. In fact, I think we can take that whole filter assembly off in one piece. Or hot mirror assembly, should I say. And yes, we can. Very, very careful with the sensor underneath. And there is our bare sensor. So I'm gonna very, very carefully put this bare sensor to one side. And now we work on the hot mirror assembly. So as I say, let's get this uh, retaining clip off. Now we can access it a lot easier. I want 
a finer screwdriver for this. Retaining clip again, put that to one side. That way around, isn't it? Yeah, okay. So now we have our hot mirror assembly and we have two filters here and this one at the front and this one at the back. So you start by removing this one at the back here. A very brittle filter this. I think most of it's gonna break away. Yeah. Uh, filter below has split as I expected and there it goes again. one out of the way and this is our second one she's just gonna it's very very brittle now what we need to do is remove all of these broken bits of filter in here Now I'm going to use a cotton bud and electrical contact cleaner to uh, clean off or try and clean off some of the remaining residue. Now the contact cleaner wasn't doing a brilliant job so we're just going to try a little bit of white spirit. So now comes reassembly. First thing we're going to do is put our retaining clip back on our filter housing. Make sure that's snapped into place and secure. Okay, that seems to have it. And we're going to take our sensor, clear any dust away. Same with our housing. Going to refit our filter housing to the sensor and return the retaining screws and now we're going to return the sensor to the camera before we do that I'm just going to bring the camera body back over, remembering about those shims and not turning it up the wrong way. And I'm just going to give a good clearing of any dust that may be in there. Okay, happy with that. And now to return the sensor 
to the camera body. Being very careful as we do so. Let's uh, back down and let's return the retaining screws. And that's our sensor back in. Now we return our circuit board. So we have this electrical clip to return. Make sure that's properly seated. Now we can return the front, or rather the top of the camera into its position. Now this is actually a good time to remember about that uh, fiber optic cable, which is just in here and to return it into its correct position. Like so. Okay, so I've just done some checks off camera and yeah, absolutely brilliant. Um, as suspected, uh, or unexpectedly, the autofocus does work to a degree in that it uh, doesn't hunt, it does go away and find what it believes is focus, but in practice, that focus is a bit soft. Now, it's not soft to the point where you couldn't make some reasonable corrections uh, in post-processing with something like Topaz Sharpen. Uh, so potentially it could be usable as a normal everyday camera with an appropriate original white balance filter inserted. However, um, manual focusing, which is what we're looking at for an Astro modified camera and for a, a dedicated infrared camera, 
uh, works absolutely perfectly and the images are nice and sharp with manual focusing so all in all everything working everything good uh, for a dedicated full spectrum modification camera for astro uh, photography and for infrared photography both with manual focusing uh, this is absolutely perfect and I'm very pleased with the way that uh, that modification went so yeah for a cheap camera on eBay that wasn't working to a fully modified uh, and dedicated astro and infrared camera full spectrum mod very very pleased happy days thanks for watching hi everyone uh, back in the back garden again tonight we're looking at uh, clear skies it's minus one at the moment looking to get down to minus five overnight uh, with perfectly clear skies projected over the next two possibly three nights so tonight um, got the uh, tripod and everything set up uh, with the EQ6R Pro mount on going to be bringing out the William Optic scope uh, a little bit later on as it gets to dusk I've got that uh, acclimatizing to the temperatures in the conservatory at the moment and uh, tonight we're going to be testing out the 1100D Canon uh, that I've just uh, full spectrum modified. So we're going to be putting that on the rig tonight, giving that a test, see how well it's performing. And uh, we're going to do two or three hours on the North American Nebula. And uh, then once my target for the night clears that dirty great big tree, um, then I'm going to be getting on the uh, Flaming Star and Tadpoles Nebula for the rest of the night, hoping to get about uh, six or seven hours on, on those. So about two or three hours on uh, the North American and about six or seven, hopefully, on the uh, Flaming Star and Tadpoles uh, and testing that 1100D out and see how, and seeing how it gets on. So uh, wish me luck and uh, it's a lovely night. I hope some of you are out tonight and um, clear skies everybody take care